Okay, so welcome to my very first series of, um, of, of English pronunciation, where we're going to address some of the issues or some of the issues, um, you know, concerning uh, the way you pronounce or we pronounce the words in English language. Now, unfortunately, a lot of non-native English speakers are not able to pronounce the words in English the way they should be pronounced. And at times we discover that we pronounce those words inaccurately or inappropriately. So in this video, I'm going to highlight nine English vocabularies that are actually pronounced um, wrongly by non-native speakers in general. Okay, so let's dive into it. Right, so the first word we're gonna explore is, well, cryitude. Now, I'm not sure exactly if I pronounce this word correctly, but to find it out, the first thing I'm gonna look at is the phonemic script of the word. And I see that the word contains three sounds. Okay, at the same time, I see that the first sound contains a small mark at the top of the letter P. Okay, now that refers to distress. Now, which means that the first sound, P, needs to be stressed. So you will pronounce it with the, with, the, with the heavy sound. Okay, so I pronounce it like P. Now the next sound, cry, okay? I don't want to pronounce like cry to it. Rather, I'll speak it slowly without stress. So I will pronounce it like cry, pull cry, pull cry, pull cry, toot, pull cry toot. Okay, I'll say it again, pull cry toot. Now, can you say that with me, please? Pull cry toot. And you, you notice is that, what you notice is that the first sound is bigger and louder and the last sound is also bigger and louder, but the one in the middle is actually not. So how you pronounce it again? Palcritude. Can you say that please? Okay, excellent. Now I'm going to associate the word palcritude with this meaning. So I'm going to use picture first. Okay. Now looking at the picture, what we understand that palcritude refers to something, you know, which is concerning the beauty of a person. So if you look at the beauty or a physical beauty, it means it is actually a word for pulchritude. Now looking at the meaning of the word pulchritude, it means physical beauty. Okay, now mind the word acts as a noun, which you can see in the bracket there. Okay. Now, how can you possibly use the word in example or in a sentence? Now, since the word acts as a noun, so we look at the example here, which is, do you know why a woman of such polycritude? Oh, no, it's not polycritude. Now, you see, I pronounce it wrongly. So I go back to the sentence and I pronounce it correctly. Do you know why a woman of such polycritude is married to me? Because I make a comfortable living. Okay, now you may want to repeat the same example with the word uh, pronounced um, palcritude in its right way. Okay, now let's move on to the next word in English language. And the word we're gonna look at is mischievous. Now again, I'm a bit confused. I'm a bit bamboozled, okay, that whether I am pronouncing the words correctly or not. Oh, look at the, the sound, the, the small, um, the small thing, you know, I can see on M, the sound M, and I understand that the, the sound M, the first sound miss, okay, has to be bigger and louder, which means it has to be stressed. Now, I'm not going to pronounce like mischievous, or not mischie mischievous, okay? I'm going to I'm going to pronounce like mischievous, misch, misch, mischievous. Okay, can you say that for me, please? Yes, it's mischievous. Okay. Now, what exactly does that mean? 
Now, if I associate again the word with the picture, I see someone doing something stupid or silly that might cause him a harm. And that actually means mischievous. Okay, now if you associate a word with a picture, you will be able to understand the meaning of the word more than you know, looking at this at its definition. But we'll be looking at this mean at its meaning and definition as well. So mischievous refers to someone enjoying playing tricks and annoying other people, or maybe you know, himself or herself. Now let's look at the example. A mischievous boy was told off by her mother. Now I'm sure that the boy should have some should have done something wrong, and the mother might have become so angry, so she had to scold the young boy. Okay, now can you pronounce the word for me, please? Mischievous. Now mind it, the word actually is not mischievous; it's mischievous. I have I've had lots of people saying mischievous. Yes, it's not yes, it's was mischievous. One more thing which you notice at the end of the word is the sure sound. Now that means the word, I'm sorry, the, the last sound first is the unstressed sound because it contains the sure. So whatever you spot sure in a word, for example, on a sound, you must quickly conclude that that part of a sound, that part of a word doesn't need to be stressed at all. Okay, now let's look at another word here. Hyperbole. Is it really hyperbole? Okay, now let's look at its pronunciation, which is enclosed in the phonemic script. And I can see that, that that small sign is not on the first sound because the word contains three sounds. Hyperbole. Oh, sorry, it's bully. Okay, hyperbole. So I see that the stress is on the second sound, per. And it's not on the first sound high. So that means I'm not going to stress the first sound and there should be stress, there should be spoken without stress, like hyperbole, uh, 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 hyperbole. Okay, now say hyperbole, uh, hyperbole. Right. Now again, I want to associate the word with the picture. Okay. And I see something rather unusual, something rather exaggerated, something rather overrated in the picture, which may not be true in the real sense, actually. So let's look at the definition of the word hyperbole. Now it means it's the way of speaking or writing that makes something sound better, more exciting, more dangerous, etc than it really is so in other words it's, it's the exaggeration and if you look at the pictures you can see they all are exaggerations now let's find out how we can use the word hyperbole as a noun in sentence the film is being promoted with all the usual hyperbole okay now you may want to give an example as well, which you can just write down in the comment box below. But again, I want you to listen to the word one more time and then repeat after me. Okay, now I'll say the word and then you pronounce it. A properly. Okay. Now, can you say it one more time? A properly. Excellent. Now let's discover another word. How do you pronounce it? Now, I heard lots of people pronounce it as a cachet. Now, what I understand that if you pronounce this word as a cachet, you have to put T after E, that C -H, sorry, C -A -C -H -E -T, that is a cachet. But this word is not a cachet, it's cash. It's similar to the cash that you carry in your pocket, but not exactly the same. So what does that mean? <clears throat> Now we normally talk about the memory in a computer or the storage in a house, and that refers to the word cash, cash, not the cache, but cash. Now remember, cache has something different meaning. Okay, now I'm going to associate the word cash 
with the picture, and the picture is a picture of a memory in the in, 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 on, on, on the card. Okay. Now let's look at the meaning of it. Now, cache is a part of a computer's memory that stores copies of data that's software needed while a program is running. And I'm sure that if you just you know, open your computer, a CPU, you'll find cache memory, uh, which is actually used to store copies of the data which you need you know, when the program actually is running on your computer. Now let's look at the example. The least access data in cache memory is replaced by newly accessed data. Now you may want to share some of your examples as well in the comments box below. Now remember the word actually is cache and not a cache. Now you may want to pronounce it after me. Can you say that again? Cache, cache. Okay, excellent. And now we move on to another word in English, which is pronounced inaccurately by lots of non-native speakers. And the word is okay, is etc. Okay, is etc. So remember it's at and not it, is etc. And I always have to stress the first sound, which is at, etc. <clears throat> I didn't find a particular picture so she was to associate the word, etc. But this is a picture that will do, I'm sure. Now, what does that mean? Now, this is a very common word in English, which we use as noun. And it is written short as ATC. Uh, it is used after a list to show that there are one thing that you could have mentioned, like I'm buying shoes, t-shirts, um, books, etc. It means that there are more things in the list that you could have mentioned. Now, if you look at the example here, shoe type indicates the kind of footwear, such as boots, shoes, overshoes, etc. Okay, so can you pronounce this word after me? I'll say the word and you repeat after me, etc. etc. Excellent. Okay. And the next word we're going to look at is. Oh my God, how do you pronounce it? It's a forte. Forte. I'm not saying forte because I don't see, you know, that small, you know, mark on the second sound, but I see the small mark on the first sound above f, 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 like f and o, f, f is orange, f and o. For, for, then look at the last sound, te. It's a forte, forte. Excellent. So remember the first sound is always bigger and louder because it carries stress. It has a stress in it. And the last sound is not stress, so it's like t forte. Now, what does actually it mean? So we're gonna associate again the word with the picture. All right. I see that this is a kind of an activity that you excel at. It's a strength that you have, something that you're good at. It's a skill. Now, if I refer um, to one of the skills that I'm good at, it's actually archery. I'm just giving you an example, actually not good at archery. Okay, so it's something that you're good at. Now, you might want to share with me the skills that you are good at, maybe your strengths, for example. Now, mine is one of the, one of them is actually archery, but it's just one of them. I have other skills that I excel at. Okay, now let's look at the meaning here, because it's, it's good to associate the word with the picture so that, so that you understand its meaning. Okay, now it means a thing that somebody does particularly well. Okay. I do the archery well, so it's my mm, it's my mm, it's my forte. Excellent, okay. Now you may want to pronounce it after me. Okay, forte. Can you say it again, please? Forte, excellent, okay. Now what is your forte? <laughs> All right, 
Now let's look at me, sorry, the example. Now languages have never been my, no, it's not for me actually, you know? <laughs> languages have always been my forte, but this is just an example that languages have never been my forte. Now you might want to share some of the example of your forte in the comment box below. All right, now next word I'm gonna look at is foyer, foyer. Now I see again the word f, the sound f has the, gain, the, the same mark at the top of f sound, okay? And the second sound is like an orange, okay? Four, four year, four year, okay. There's a four, four, yeah, okay. So after four, we have um, a diphthong, one diphthong, four, and the other one, I, okay, in a four year, okay, wonderful. So you pronounce it like a four year. Now to associate the word with the meaning, Okay, I see a big hole, which is through the main door, the entrance, okay? That's the foyer. So foyer means a large open space inside the entrance of a theater or hotel where people can meet or wait. Now you might have a foyer even in your house, a large open space, which is through the entrance not particularly the theater or the hotel. Now let's look at the example. I was asked to wait in the foyer when I went to meet the president of the club. Now, if you might want to share some of your examples, please do in the comment box below. Now, the next word we're gonna look at is, oh my God, how do you pronounce it? Is it niche? is a Nikkei. So I'm going to look at its pronunciation, the, the, the one which is actually enclosed within the, 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 the two backslashes, and I see the sound as you know, ni and sh, which is for shoes or chandelier, for example. So it's niche, niche, niche. Okay, so you can pronounce as niche. Some way you can also pronounce as Niche, niche, okay, niche or niche. Okay, now what does that mean? I can see a lady working, you know, as a busy person doing something which she finds, um, you know, good at, something which she finds suitable for her. So it's a kind of a job or an activity which is exactly suitable for you. Well, what is my niche? I found my niche as a busy English language trainer. So, if you can pronounce it again with me, niche, niche. Okay, I hope that you found these words useful. And I also hope that you learn how to pronounce these words the way they should be pronounced in standard English. I'll come back to you with more videos in future. Thank you so very much. I hope you have a good day and bye-bye.